I have a table here that I'm going to use at a bigger project. And before I do, though, I want to do a lot of things with this data. I want to normalize it. Uh, I've got to do a bunch of data manipulation. Now, instead of sending it out to Excel and doing all my manipulation there, uh, I contend that I can actually do all most of my manipulation here, or a good bit of it here in Access, and uh, not have to s export it out to Excel first and then import it back in. So I'm going to show you some of the uh, quick ways to manipulate your data through the QBE and a little, a couple of tricks that you can uh, use in your own projects. So I'm going to set this up where you can see the table up top here and you can see the query that I'm running down here. So you'll have two views. You'll have, uh, you'll look at the table here and you'll look at the query that I'm running in uh, down here. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is uh, go down to this customer address. I've noticed that someone has made all these customer addresses lowercase for one reason, and I want to make them all uppercase to just for consistency sake. So what I want to do is I want to bring the in the customer address field into my QBE. Uh, I want to make sure that this is an update query, and I want to update to UCase cus address. Very easy. Now if I run this, it tells me I'm about to update seven rows and as you can see all my customer addresses are, are uppercase now. Great. Now what I want to do is I want to say uh, I only want one address field. I want address and customer address 2 to be all under one column called address. And I want to split these two off with a comma. So I can easily do that now by saying customer address, bring those two in and again it's an update query and I want to update customer address to cus address the ampersand and and I want to put a, a comma in quotes ampersand and then cus address to okay so basically what I want to do is I want to update the cus address to cus address and uh, a comma and any time you put any sort of uh, character you have to uh, put it into quotes and then the ampersand which uh, kind of means concatenate and then cost address too and actually I don't need this and when I run that as you can see it updated to this okay so now I can get rid of this column okay so now I've got one address field now notice that I have a uh, customer zip here that has uh, a nine digit zip for the for you all US zip. What I want to do is I want to make all the zips that look like this a nine digit zip look like this a five digit zip. So how can I do that? Well, let me bring in my cust zip column here and I'm going to update that to the left of cust zip five where criteria is less than now that's basically going to exclude any zip code that's text based or any uh, zip code that has an alphabetical character in there so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and so now all my zip codes that don't have a letter in them will turn to Plus five. Okay, so that's great. Okay, so now I want to fill in postal type, and I want to fill this in based on the zip code here. If this is a U.S. zip code, I want to put in postal type U.S., and if this is a Canadian, I want to put post postal type uh, Canadian. So what I want to do here is I want to check the length of the zip code field. If the length of the string in this column is 5, then it's US. If it's not 5, then, or if it's greater than 5, then it's Canadian. I can actually check for that using the LEN function length. And I want to say if the cus zip, the criteria on cus zip, if the length is equal 5. So whatever I do to this update query will uh, require the field cus zip to be the length of 5 and so now I can bring in postal type and do an update to US 
and when I hit that it says it's going to update 5 and you'll see the postal type US comes in only to those customers that codes that have a length of 5 and now if I say greater than 5 I want to update to CN and then the rest updates good now I have an expiration date here and I want to put the expiration year and expiration month in different columns and I want to basically make them uh, text so I, I would be able to query on a specific month or query on a specific year instead of uh, just just have this ready in my data set so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in year and month and I'm gonna do an update query on year and year is just basically gonna be format expiration date So a year is just going to be basically uh, expiration date formatted to a four-digit year or a four-digit text that represents the year. And then I'm going to do the same thing with month. That basically says that whatever expiration date happens to uh, represent, I'm going to take the, that date and convert it to a text field that represents that month. And it could be anything. This could be Q for quarter, week for the week number of the year, uh, a three-digit day. It could be uh, day, day, slash month, month, slash year, year. Um, any kind of combination that would that would give you some sort of a, a text-based uh, indication of what that date is. Now I'm going to run that query, and it perfect. So now I've got a, a month and a year right here with virtually no work. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the serial number here and I'm going to make all these um, serial numbers have eight digits and if uh, it doesn't have eight digits I'm going to preface each of these digits with a zero. So this is going to be a couple of step process. First thing I want to do is I want to add um, eight zeros in front of all these numbers just for good measure. So I'm going to update this to 0, 0, 0, 0, 8 zeros, and serial number. Okay. Now when I run this, it's basically going to, it's basically going to put 8 zeros in front of all the serial numbers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this query to say I want the right eight of that serial number place so now I'm gonna hit run and as you can see now it's they're all an eight digit uh, serial number and all I had to do is run two update queries now we're ready to take our table and bring it out to whatever bigger process that we have and use it and we have basically done a lot of the, uh, data normalization here without bringing it out to Excel we used exclusively the QBE no code no fancy uh, smancy stuff and uh, it's a great way to normalize your data without having to do too much work